Now, one thing I should note, and you can confirm this, we were talking about this uh, pre-broadcast. I think On only had four entries in this race, and you had heard that uh, Carmela Cardama Baez may not be running, which would get them just down to three, so they wouldn't have a full team to score on this day. Is that what you were hearing? Yes, that is what, what I was told after they evaluated where she was in her training, decided not to race at this point. So going to go with Alicia Monson, Sage Herta, and Cinta Visa for On Athletics. So they were hoping to be able to field a full team on the women's side, but not able to do that as they evaluated each individual and the goals and where they are coming off of the fall. So be those athletes. So certainly a lot of other teams to watch the, the Hansons team um, up there going to be one to key on when you're talking about that competition on the women's side led by Natasha Rogers expected to be led by Natasha Rogers. And there is the aforementioned Natasha Rogers member of team USATF at the outdoor championships this year. And, 15th in that world championship at 10,000 meters and was the cross country champion for the United States back in 2020. It was one of the only U.S. championships that was contested that year because that, that was back in January in San Diego preceding the uh, start of the pandemic. So she's getting set to racing far right of the screen. There's Emily Enfeld. Next to the squad from Puma Elite. Emily, no stranger to success here in cross country as well. Her only U.S. national title, in fact, was the 2018 USA Cross Country Championships and has such a had a great career and finding herself ready to race again here in Austin, Texas with the uh, final instructions here in a moment. Alicia Monson leading people in dance steps there in the center of picture as she gets re ready for racing. Smaller field on the women's side as you can see here from high above but still again some good teams represented on this women's side for this first time in Texas edition of the Fitness Bank Cross Champs. And although Emily is racing individually, worth mentioning she's now training as part of Team Boss under Coach Joe Bossard. And she's primarily stayed located in Portland for her training, but has made the trip to Boulder for about four weeks to have some training sessions with that full team there. Well, we're being told that the issue is at the timing tent and they're trying to get everything switched over from the uh, conclusion of that men's race over to the start of this women's race. So apologies as we leave the athletes here waiting for their opportunity to get out on the course. Good news for us is we've got the internet as long as we'd like. And it may be dark by the time this race uh, gets underway <laughs> as we're Catching Thank goodness up to it's the, uh, central, in the central time zone. Yeah, exactly. The uh, twilight's <laughs> going uh, to be coming into uh, play here as they've thrown up the uh, lights around this school and this park for the purposes of us having the ability to get you the best pictures we can. And our thanks to our team on site from Runner Space with all the ability to capture these pictures from high above and as well on the ground with our gators in our fixed positions. You see Jesse Williams, the head of sound running there at the bottom of your screen, waiting for things to be released and to get underway. And the gator has been asked to come by and do one final sweep through to the squads assembled for this second and final race of the day. 8K the distance as it was for the men this time it's the Pacers women's 8K at the Fitness Bank Cross Champs. And with Leo Manzano doing the starting duties, a fixture of the Austin area, the Olympic medalist for Team USA back in 2012 in London, we're underway 
with the racing on the women's side here at the Fitness Bank and Cross as, Champs. As we talk about the team interest as well, the Puma Elite Group boasts quite a few contenders up front. Taylor Warner, the All-American at Arkansas, Fiona O'Keefe, a four-time All-American in cross country as well. A couple of those athletes to be watching for who have had great success in cross country already, but that's a big part of that Puma Elite Group that will be up there likely to push that pack up front and be in contention in what is expected to be a pretty tight team race because of this much smaller field that we have. And right up front, you have those teammates from on Alicia Monson and Sage Herda. And you think about those are two athletes who are at different ends of the track and field spectrum. Sage, that 800, 1500 meter middle distance runner, whereas Alicia has that fantastic 5K, 10K endurance and proficiency. Dathan Ritzenhine described Alicia Monson as just tenacious and super tough. He said she's going to put herself in the hurt locker in these type of racing situations. And for Sage, meanwhile, he considers this uncharted territory because when she was competing at Colorado and All-American in cross country, but you're talking about 6K, which is on the far end of someone who, you know, was third in the Diamond League final in the 800 meters and uh, had such an incredible past two seasons at 800, has really leaned into the 800 meter distance after the NCAA level being an indoor mile champion. So this is an opportunity for her to flex her range, the longest distance that she has raced. And as we expected, Natasha Rogers up there as well, the world championships 10K finalist up there in the thick of things. Emily Enfield also up there in that lead pack. And leading them all, Edna Kurgat wearing the U.S. Army singlet. 2017 NCAA cross country champion while at the University of New Mexico. The women reach the decision point of the hay bales or the uh, wall of mud to the side as they work their way down in front of the school here in Austin, Texas. As we look at the leader, Kurgat, and Munson, again, working their way around some, you know, spots here on the course that are shaded and a little bit muddy. But Kurgat doing her best impression of Ollie Hoare and getting out to the lead here as we saw Hoare get out to the lead on the men's side. First of five loops of this course, Munson, Enfield, Rogers all gingerly make that corner here as they work their way back towards the track. Looking to the position where Emily Enfeld is right now, this is exactly where Joe Bossard told her to be. He said she's really an intuitive racer. So we just want to key off those top two and be there in the mix among that front three. He said that their strategy over the late fall into the winter, building up to the outdoor season is just go where the people are racing and get comfortable comfortable being a racer again. She didn't race much in the last two years because of injury. Last month, Emily ran that 5K in New York City, placed third in 1530. He said this will really set up for a nice block of training, wanted to get uh, into a couple of different races just to get things right get things rolling from a racing perspective, building up ultimately for that sound running 10,000 meters is one of those that she is eyeing in terms of being in top racing form. So a good cross country 8K, a way to build into that. Well, certainly a smaller field on the women's side, but it is a closer field than what we saw on the men's side. As you can see from high above, good 20, 20 plus runners here within about, what, five, six seconds of each other. We'll have that confirmed here in a moment when they work their way back onto the track. They'll hit the uh, timing mats here for the first of the uh, four splits we'll have for you in race, leading us to the 8K finish. But Kurgat, Munson, and Enfield, along with Rogers, will be your first four we'll see here onto the track. Those flash bulbs coming into play now as the... Uh, Daylight hours descend into twilight. And they are back on the track here for the completion of the first of five loops in this 8K cross champs. Looks like also among just that trail pack there behind the leaders, Courtney Wayman, 
the Steeplechaser World Championship finalist, NCAA champion this past year at BYU. That's someone who is going to capitalize on an opportunity to hurdle some hay bales there over the course of this track, part of that tailor-made professional group based in Provo. She's up there looking really comfortable in that front pack. They have her back in about fourth, now fifth position here is the uh, first splits come through and we can reset the field. So Kurgott, Munson, Enfield, and Courtney Wayman, Kayla Reinhardt of the Railroad Athletics, also among the group here. She was an NCAA qualifier this year at 10,000 meters for Duke and also qualified for the cross country championships at the NCAA level last year. Group of seven now in the front. We're getting into those critical points on the course where you want to be sure that you maintain that contact with the switchbacks that you have as you navigate through the backside of the course. That lead pack has separated itself from the chase pack, and it's tight up there. A lot of traffic up front behind Edna Kurgat with Monson, Infeld, Weymouth, and Reinhardt, Sinta Visa up, up there as well in contention one of those taking a, another big step up in distance the middle distance specialist at old miss jumping up to race 8,000 meters for cinta visa one of those of the on athletics club racing alongside her teammate sage herda they've done a lot of their training this fall those training sessions they've done together but cinta visa has also stepped up and started to build her endurance base doing a little bit more mileage of workouts with alicia monson as well to start to possibly eye more 5,000 meter racing opportunities. Hey, you know, 5,000 is not going to feel so bad after you race 8K, right, Paul? Not at all. Great shot of the uh, women here as they come right past the uh, baseball and soccer facilities at this school and work their way around this second lap of five at the 8K distance. Kerr got in front. Now, you'll note on the live stats, we're missing a few of uh, the Hanson Brooks athletes in the field, notably Natasha Rogers, who's there among the top four. What we've learned from our our crew is that the uh, women might actually be wearing the men's bibs from the same team. And that was one of the problems that they had in the, uh, the timing delay. So it's popping up on some of our live stats is uh, Jacob Clems in fourth position, but he ran the men's race. And so sometimes uh, I guess when bibs got handed out to the teams, they, uh, they mixed them up, so we'll, we apologize for that, but the data is uh, the uh, data is what it is, and we'll uh, try to update for again. So all the athletes from Hanson's Brooks are in the system, but just not populating on our data at this time. And while many of these athletes competing in the women's race might be comfortable running 10,000 meters on the track, those like Alicia Monson and Emily Enfield, they have not raced 8,000 meters in cross country like at the collegiate level where you go up to just that 6,000 meter race. So this is really a little bit of over distance from the cross country perspective for many of them. And in talking to the coaches, they really just wanted to take this as an opportunity to get out race and just see what happens without needing to gauge yourself on exactly, oh, this is where I stack up or where I need to be for 8,000 for any particular purpose, more so just really getting there, mixing it up, shaking things up and having something to break up that rigorous fall training block and training cycle. Also, Alicia Monson looks like she is in fine form there as she chases Edna Kurgat, Emily Enfield looking like she's in sharp position as well. So back to a shot high above here as they make this turn working their way back towards the track for what will be the conclusion of the second of five loops of this course that will get us to the 8k distance and Kurgat 
remains in front of Munson and Rogers, Infeld, and Wayman. That are will be your top five coming back onto the track. What a comeback year this has been for Natasha Rogers, who now finds herself up there within the top three. She's been so candid about what she has battled from an injury perspective, the mental challenges that she has endured over her career coming off of, you know, 10 years ago, just missing the Olympic team at 10,000, finished second, but did not get the standard that was when she was a junior at texas a&m so all that she has endured in the last decade to get herself back to a point where she makes a world championship team and was top three at the u.s championships so an incredible testament to her her commitment and refinding her love for the sport admitted that she almost retired and walked away multiple times over the last 10 years if you think back to her race at the U.S. Championships this summer, it was a it was a sprint to the finish. It was an absolute battle to the line between Natasha Rogers and Emily Enfeld for that third spot. And she said she just felt like something took over her. Emily really responded well with a kick. And Natasha said it was almost just more than even something within her to be able to find something, find what she needed to dive across the line for that third position. Squeezing back into some of the uh, narrower parts of the course here as they are just outside the outfield fence of this baseball stadium. Munson, Enfield, and Kurgot. And then back to Rogers and Wayman in fourth and fifth. Talk about Munson's just incredible 22 when she started the year winning that cross country championship runner up on the track at 10,000 meters 13th when it came time for Oregon 22 in the summer at that distance and you know ran US all time number 4 at 3000 on the track in August number 3 all time 5000 meters in June in Oslo and now looks to be in good shape here as they'll begin to transition and look ahead to the year that comes next on the calendar 2023 and it's no no rest for those who are you know seeking those grand stages of major outdoor global championships as we'll be right back to a world championship year with the host city of Budapest welcoming the group in it's a little bit later than it was this year the uh, staging of that event will be in the latter stages of August and Oregon will play home to the Diamond League final as the Prefontaine Classic, usually held each year in late May, actually moves to September after the World Championships, and it will host the top professional athletes in the world for a two-day meet to crown the Diamond League champions. Right now, we're in Austin, Texas, on the first day of December in 2022, and Alicia Munson and Kurgat. And Emily Enfield, now a trio, stride for stride. Wayman and Rogers there back in the distance, maybe about 10 or so meters back. As they are getting ready to complete loop number three. And watching Emily Enfield, Emily Enfield in that chase pack, she's running really smart. She's avoiding running any extra distances as they have those really short, quick turns where you've seen Kurgat and Monson bounce around a little bit. Emily Enfield is racing really efficiently right now, hugging the turns, avoiding running too much extra distance as you have this very long cross country course. Also looks incredibly comfortable as she's settled in back there, but that's also something that you mentioned the array of races at which Alicia Monson has dominated and thrived and found incredible form over the last year. And she just looks so incredibly poised while she's doing it. You look at just how smooth she is. She's comfortable running from the front. And that is well illustrated right here. I do feel like Emily Enfeld could be gearing up for a bit of the bit of a kick at the middle portion of this race to attempt to 
to maybe stretch things out a little bit because we've seen time and time and again that Alicia Monson does have a threatening kick when she needs to go to it. And at this time, we want to thank one of our partners at Glucose, where they make simple, delicious energy products that provide clean and effective energy. Glucose is dedicated to helping athletes unleash their peak performance with the energy they need to always push limits and to be their best. The best on this day are already on the track and are completing that third loop of the course as there's two miles or so to go. Alicia Monson and Kurgat and Emily Enfield, one, two, and three, and then back about four and a half or so seconds to Courtney Wayman and Natasha Rogers, though Wayman now has extended her lead on Rogers. Fiona Keith of Puma Lee back there among the leaders as well, has moved up slowly and steadily here over the last uh, five minutes or so of racing. But back now out on this course, and all three of these women capable of strong finishes. As you talked about, Enfeld, who again won that amazing bronze medal in the bird's nest in Beijing back in 2015 with that lean at the line and back in a Team USA kit in 2022 at the 5,000 meter distance where she finished 14th and was third in the USA Cross Country Championships, the race that Munson won back in January. Look at the splits there for Alicia Munson and Edna Kurgat as our top two racers. And effectively, Infeld has run the same. And now confirming that as you see her splits from miles one, two, and three. But as I said, everyone capable here. And now it's just a question of who's going to decide to make a move and when. This is where it really tests your threshold. And the person who is going to challenge the field, this is going to be who has the most grit over the final portion of the race. Who's going to get out there and take a bit of a risk? And that's something that when you go through the fall, you don't have a lot of opportunities to do because you're staying within your training program. Now it's a little bit of who's going to mix things up and want to take a chance. And it looks like that Alicia Monson is going to test everyone to go with her. Looks like she has a quickened her pace ever so slightly and a great response from Emily Enfield to go right with her on her shoulder. Here come the hay bales once again. One goes over, two go around as they work their way again in front of the main school building here. And the uh, twists and turns of this part of the course will bring them back towards the track for the completion of the penultimate lap of this race. Been a great day of racing so far as we Wait to crown a cross champ get... on the individual and the team side here shortly on the women's side. Sorry, Laura. Oh, you're good. I think I'm just going to say, I feel like you should get bonus points for traversing the hay bales. I think that that should somehow you should should get extra for doing that uh, and, and hurdling those as we're seeing that lower camera is now fixated on the hay bales while the upper camera is watching our leaders right now. And this is where this could benefit Alicia Monson because Dathan Ritzenhine says she really thrives off of strength and she has had a solid few weeks of training averaging about 92 miles a week so able to really build that aerobic engine that is necessary to endure those final two laps of this race still though seeing a very tightly packed top three like they're on a, a red carpet runway there with the flash bulbs in uh, full display now as we reach into the uh, twilight in Austin across central time zone and Alicia Munson trying to keep the pace pressing at the front. Kurgat trying to stay in tow in third. Infeld there just kind of dialed in on the back of Alicia Munson. 20 minutes in now on the racing. So 
As you whip around these turns, that's a point where if you're going to try to put some distance on the rest of those in the lead pack, you can try to do it, take advantage of those quick turns and those almost switchback-like opportunities and try to find that extra gear where you can throw in a surge every now and then to stretch things out. Otherwise, this is shaping up to be a, a rigorous final kick, Paul. So back on the track, our three leaders on the women's side. As we're going to set ourselves up for a pretty good kick to the finish for a individual title at these cross champs. $2,500 up for grabs for Alicia Munson, Emily Enfeld, and Edna Kurgat with one mile or so to go. They'll make one full mile completion and then back on the track and then a quick turn for home as you see that last split as they come through in about 21.10, 21.11 or so. So now we just lay in wait, seeing who's gonna press or try to make a strategic decision. There's a lot of really interesting twists and turns of this course and perhaps the, you know, the, uh, the recognizance that you do as a runner over maybe these last couple of laps is like, okay, where would I want to go if I'm going to make a move? If you find an opportunity to make a move, you need to exploit it right away because there are not going to be many of them on this course with the way it is laid out. We're also seeing, you can see some of the men, some of the, the teammates there on the infield as they're maybe doing their cool down, finding points on the course to able to be able to cheer on those who are competing here in the women's 8,000 meter. One of so the Munson things we mentioned that one of the things, you know, as we mentioned, uh, uh, ter the terrain itself, the quick turns, it's also pretty narrow in a number of these opportunities. So if you're running on the shoulder and you're trying to bounce around, you don't have much real estate to navigate around, much landscape to try to move around any of the athletes. Just a few of those very short straightaways right there is a decent opportunity where as you get more onto the concrete coming off of the rockiness and coming off of the grass, you might be able to throw in a bit of a surge as you do see Edna Kurgat trying to stretch things out. There's Emily Enfield trying to move to the inside as they go around that turn as well. Well, this race being led by the NCAA cross country runner up in 2019, Alicia Munson. The men's champion that year won the men's race, Edwin Kurgat. Edna Kurgat now moving around those hay bales and trying to stay in this race with Infeld ahead of her and Munson ahead of the two of them. But these are the closing moments in this little wooded section in front of the school and they'll work their way back up onto the main fields of play here that surround the school here in Austin and then back onto the track and then a quick turn back onto the infield to close out this race in 2022. Munson and maybe now just a couple of strides between Infield and Kurgot for third. Infield trying to hold on. And as they emerge like from the woods now, it does look like Kurgat's losing traction a bit. And it looks like Infeld is trying to position herself to get in a spot to make a move. She's bouncing a little bit from the left to the right behind Alicia Monson, almost eyeing where she's going to try to take an opportunity to command the lead when she has it. But it's been very difficult for her to find the opportunity to do it because of the layout of this course. This is going to be an absolute gut check right here going into the finish line, going into that home stretch to find that opportunity to see another phenomenal finish between these two right here. 
couple of USA Cross Country champions. Munson, the reigning champion. Infield's only U.S. title was a cross country championship back in 2018. Going to get themselves onto the track here shortly, and that'll give at least Infield a little bit more of a maybe stable room and some wider room to potentially make a move. But now Munson has another stride ahead of Infield. Kerr got back about 10 meters. So inside of 400 meters to go, they're on the track. Munson with the lead, Infield trying to gather something in the tank to close that gap. And Munson now with a bigger lead here in the last 100 meters or so. Through that five mile mark now. Of this 8K distance, she has the lead heading to the finish and looks over her shoulder. And it does not look like Emily Infeld's going to have anything left to try to catch her as they close into the final stretches. One more look behind her, Alicia Munson. Well, if she decides to defend her cross-country championship for the United States next year, she looks like she's pretty good form about a month away from the racing. Alicia Munson will take the Fitness Bank cross champs on the women's side, holding off Emily Infeld, who will finish in second. And Edna Kurgat, gutsy race from her, another standout cross country runner from her collegiate days. She will finish in third. And looks like Natasha Rogers of Hanson's Brooks will finish in fourth. 26.56 for Alicia Monson, about 3.22 1K pace over the course of that race. Looks like she kicked it up there over the last two laps of this course. And you can tell when she gets locked in into the league, it locked into the lead, excuse me. She is so tough to contend with. That is, she's just a runner who knows how to race to win. And that is in cross country, that is indoor, that is outdoor. That is any distance with which she toes the line, she is going to be in a position to contend for a victory. And my apologies, as I noted that uh, it was actually Fiona O'Keefe, which was the fourth runner across the line. Rogers had been among the top five and was passed in the closing stages of the race. Puma Elites had a good race as a team as well. Strong performance for them. We'll see how that reflects on the team race. All these results again unofficial, noting that we had an issue with the bibs being worn by the Hanson's Brooks team. Marta Penfreitas Stand out an NCAA champion in her own right. University of Georgia finishing up there as well. Again, a smaller field on this women's side, but everyone getting themselves through this 8K distance. And even though it was uh, speculated at the press conference that things could get ugly, everyone looks like they uh, successfully maneuvered their way around this course today, Larry. Well, and that's one of the things you, the, the biggest goal was to have a fun environment to get a really solid race in, gauge fitness, gauge that threshold, but then also want to walk away healthy. That's the biggest thing as well. You do not want to get hurt at this point in the season. Want to be sure that you're building off that strong fall base and then eyeing a successful build through the indoor racing season and on to outdoors. So it was great to see this type of environment and atmosphere, see something a little bit different. And that was something that a lot of the athletes were excited for was just a different race environment, a different type of a challenge than what you're typically going to have as a professional, as a post-collegiate athlete. You don't get many opportunities like this. So many were thriving on the chance to do exactly that. And to also have, you know, teammates with you as well, not even just on, on your side, but respectively, you know, the men or the women from the same team with which you're training and competing have everyone there as well as a bit of comfort camaraderie building type of opportunity. 
We'll hope in a moment to be able to hear from the winning Alicia Munson as Hanson's Brooks gets their finish line photo opportunity for uh, competing here today. And just a genuine appreciation from the uh, race organizers, Jesse Williams and Sound Running, that so many of these teams stepped up. Hanson's Brooks last year hosted an Ekaden up in Michigan that we were part of. I think there's just a genuine effort to try to find unique ways to build sort of interest and excitement of the sport through the uh, connection to these individual training groups, many of whom aren't necessarily tied to one particular brand, but, you know, bring together, you know, in the case of like the group that we have out in uh, Utah with Taylor made elite, you know, mixture of different athletes, maybe connected to uh, to a collegiate heritage. But I think these teams, you know, are, are things that fans can cheer for. They they cheer for teams. Absolutely. And, and, you know, the running season, the running year, the calendar year itself can be so grueling when you're on the professional circuit that when you can shake things up and do something a little bit different and have something where you're able to thrive off of, whether it's being in a team environment or racing around people that you don't typically get to on the track. Maybe you're reuniting or competing with those who you were going shoulder to shoulder with, toe to toe with at the NCAA cross country championships as we saw on both the men's and the women's side it's a really great opportunity to just test yourself challenge yourself and really remind yourself what you love so much about the sport in general a lot of athletes they were introduced to running because of maybe cross country they were thrown into it or you know ran a fun run so for for many of the athletes that we were hearing from this is what gets them back to their their core and the purity of it and then also you have such a fun running environment there in austin to support an event like this great part of the running event to have the cross champs here in austin in 2022 and the winner on the women's side is with chris nickinson thanks paul we're here with alicia monson from oac the women's champion here at cross champs 26.56 got a little muddy yeah. <laughs> nice return to, to racing yeah. after a, a little break how you feeling about it yeah good I honestly didn't know much of what to expect out here just because we've been doing so much base building and haven't really hit the workouts that usually we're like okay I could run about this in a track race so just kind of went out there and worked hard and then made sure to close when I needed to so yeah very different race from the men's race men's <laughs> race was Ollie just just tried to run away from everybody and got reeled in you and Emily and Edna I don't say you guys were working together, but you guys were running together yeah. just about the whole way to that, that right. last lap. Uh, was there any communication with you guys, or was it just, we're just going to slog it out? Yeah, not much. I think we kind of, a lot of us were on the understanding that, like, we saw what Ollie did, and if you go out a little too hard, you're kind of going to regret it. And uh, so, yeah, Dathan was just kind of like, you know, get out, but then tone it down a bit, just stay relaxed. And so I think me, Edna, Emily, were kind of all in that same position, and then we knew that we were going to race it out at the end. How important is you is it to you and your team to be able to, to run a cross-country meet this time of year, especially to be able to do it in the States? Yeah, it's good. I mean, running track all, all year is kind of demanding on the body, so being able to just come out and do something where you're not really focused on times, you're just kind of working on that strength. Uh, and it's really fun because, yeah, you don't usually do cross-country in the States as a professional, so kind of going back to the roots of what it's like in the falls uh, collegiately and just being able to do something different that isn't too high of stress is really fun. Well, you've had success on the cross country course <laughs> earlier this year. Are we going to see you uh, at U.S. Cross uh, beginning of the year? Yeah, we'll see. I think Dathan and I still have to kind of talk about we might do some more indoor racing and then focus on the track, but haven't totally decided yet. I, I would guess we would go on the track, but it was really fun to be out here while, while we could. All right, well, Alicia Monson, your winner here at the women's eight-kilometer race at Cross Champs. 26.56, not a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see you soon, and back to you in the studio, Paul. Faster than you ever ran, Chris. Thanks very much. Uh, Alicia <laughs> Monson winning on the women's side as some of the uh, last few runners complete their tour of duty here over the 8K distance. It's been a great event here in Austin, held for the very first time, the second edition of the Cross Champs. In a moment, we'll have... The team check presentations, our friends at Fitness Bank sponsoring this event and 
the check presentation. A reminder, the Fitness Bank is the runner's way to bank. You can earn the highest rate on your new Fitness Bank savings account by tracking your steps running, walking, cycling, or however you get your exercise. As we await that check presentation, Lara, we kind of look ahead to the uh, the season is to come. I guess it is, again, a lot of decisions to be made by some of these elite athletes. I mean, the fact that you won a U.S. title in cross country as it reflects the broader goals of what you might want to do in the outdoor season, those are the conversations. You know, we have a lot of fun conversations around the holiday tables, but for these elite athletes, a lot of decisions to be made now of how you're going to play 2023. A lot of pros and cons to be weighed, certainly, on behalf of the individual's conversations, you know, with their coaches to figure out what's going to be the best course and, you know, the best playbook in terms of that long-term success. You heard Alicia Monson note how grueling that track season is. So how are you attacking the track season and making sure that you go for, you know, the, the prime opportunities and you're going for quality rather than quantity in those type of situations dependent upon what your goals are and how you're navigating and building that. But also thinking about, hey, there's money to be made as well. You got to pay the bills. So you got to take that into account as well for many of these athletes, you know, as you heard on the men's side, trying to establish yourself, trying to get to that position, trying to maybe earn a sponsorship and get the support that you need to continue pursuing those.